He was a world leader. He was the Nobel Peace Prize winner. He was a moral authority. And he was my son's godfather. Growing up, one of the things that I always remember my parents saying to me and my siblings was that character is revealed when nobody's watching. When I think of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, I of course, like many of you, think of the times when the world was watching. I think and remember especially a time during the fight for uh, the struggle against apartheid right after he had won the Nobel Peace Prize and the United States under the leadership of uh, President Ronald Reagan wasn't a part really of the anti-apartheid movement and I remember the rage on an interview that Archbishop Tutu uh, was engaged with on Nightline and the rage and righteous indignation that he showed toward some of the responses of then President Reagan uh, to the anti-apartheid movement. But as vivid as these public displays of passion, of rage that was justice, of really love that was the love of God that was justice, what stands out most to me about Archbishop Desmond Tutu was who he was as Uncle Desmond when nobody was watching. That's when his character came through. And the words that I would describe are gentle, humble, compassionate, and yes, loving. And he always knew because of that when to show up, even when nobody was watching. So the story that I will never forget was when my son was about 10 years old and we were flying over to South Africa because his godfather wanted him to come for his birthday celebration. It must have been his 72nd, I think, birthday celebration. We gathered together our pennies, uh, if you will, with one of my uh, son's other uncles, and we flew over to South Africa. And all the way over on the plane, the long 20-some hour flight with a stopover in Amsterdam, as I recall, uh, my son, who was sad to leave his father at home, but he said, well, at least I'll get to see Uncle Desmond at the airport. And he was going on and on and on about how his Uncle Desmond was going to meet him at the airport. And I remember his uncle said to me, you better tell him that his Uncle Desmond isn't going to meet him at the airport. He's, he's too busy. And I, all the way over, kept trying to tell my son that that's not going to happen. But in my son's mind, this was not Archbishop, Nobel Peace Prize winner, Desmond Tutu. This was Uncle Desmond, and he was going to meet me at the airport because we were coming all the way over here for his birthday. And I, as we got closer and closer, I said, Desmond, he's a very busy man. You will probably not see him until the day of his party, which was a couple of days after we were to arrive. Desmond said, no, no, he's going to meet us at the airport. So we were both prepared, uh, his uncle and myself were prepared, we were prepared for the tears that were going to occur when Uncle Desmond wasn't at the airport. When we got off of the plane, walked through customs, 
who was standing there waiting to greet his godson. But the archbishop, in his little fisherman's cap that a lot of you may recall that he wore, and a white t-shirt and, and, and slacks. Desmond, my Desmond, turned to me and said, I told you. As we walked through the airport and people recognized the archbishop and there were cameras and the archbishop made Desmond the center of attention and said to those people, I am here to pick up my godson. Very kind and very nice, but he moved right through with Desmond. No one was watching, but it meant a lot to that little 10-year-old boy who was his godson. He never missed a birthday. He never missed an occasion to be with him, to send him a special, special message. That's character. That's humility. That's love. And he imparted his wisdom. I remember once when my son asked him why people were so mean. And we will recall that Archbishop Tutu often said, we have as human beings the greatest capacity for good as well as the greatest capacity for evil. He looked to my son who at that time I think was in kindergarten because Uncle Desmond also came to his kindergarten class. He looked to my son and he said, sometimes very good people can do some very bad things and our job is to help them to be good. Hmm. A lesson for a young boy and a lesson for all of us. So as we remember Archbishop Desmond Tutu on this day, yes, I remember him with sadness because he's no longer walking the earth to impart at least that wisdom as he walks the earth. But I remember him with love. I remember him as one with humility. And I remember him with one as one whose legacy of wisdom will live on. And so probably the last thing that I will say in terms of that wisdom is that I remember a day when I was a PhD student, I believe, struggling with a decision and worried that I would make a mistake as I made the decision. And he looked to me and he said, Killy, he said, we all make mistakes, but it's okay if we err on the side of justice. And so it will be that as I move on, I will try to carry forth the love that was his, that reminded us to err as we err, always on the side of justice. And I will be forever grateful for the love, the wisdom, the gentleness, the humility that he represented and was an exemplar of, not simply to the world, but to my son, his godson. That was a man of character because he did it. He revealed it even when the cameras weren't watching. May he rest in peace.